Hello, it's Michael here, and today we're going to be doing a tutorial on how to construct a door inside of UE4. Uh, so the door itself, obviously we uh, will be going through showing you how to uh, set up the sort of door opening and closing animation, uh, along with other little things such as obviously getting a display, uh, so an indicator to pop up to say that obviously you can either open or close the door. Um, so the first thing uh, I've done is created a brand new project uh, and I've gone ahead and used the first person template. Uh, I've also gone ahead and used the start content as we will be using some of the, uh, the assets from here. Okay, so the next thing I want to do is just go ahead and create a brand new blueprint class. Uh, so just go ahead and right click in your content browser and click blueprint class. Uh, for the blueprint type, you want to go ahead and click actor and this is just the actor type that we'll be using there. Uh, so I'm just going to go ahead and give this a name of bp underscore door, uh, like so. I'm just going to go ahead and give that a quick save. Okay, uh, so I'll go ahead and open that up. And what we actually want to do now is add the static meshes we'll be using for the door. Uh, so in the viewport uh, panel, uh, on the blueprint once you've opened it up, you just want to come uh, go ahead and go to the components panel uh, and click the add component. Now from the drill list, you just want to go ahead and choose static mesh. Uh, so I'm actually going to go ahead and call this door frame because uh, we will be including a door frame uh, for our uh, door as well. Uh, so with the door for selected, we want to go ahead and actually define what the meshes we're using under the details panel. Uh, so I'm going to go ahead and call that door frame. Uh, yeah, so this is the uh, door frame static mesh that's included uh, within the starter content. Uh, I'm actually going to go ahead and just move the door frame to our root of the blueprint. And so that just causes that little ball icon to disappear there. Okay, so the next one we want to do is go ahead and add another static mesh. Uh, and this is actually going to be our mesh door. Uh, so the, the actual component will be obviously opening and closing. Like so. And uh, we just want to go ahead and align this up. Uh, so you may need to adjust your snaps. Like so. Okay, uh, so the first thing you'll probably notice with this particular door mesh, uh, the pivot point itself is actually at the bottom uh, corner of the mesh, and it's also directly in the middle, like, as you can see there. Uh, so if you are setting up uh, or creating your own door meshes, uh, you just want to make sure you're obviously following a similar uh, sort of stance such as that. So it just makes uh, rotating the door when you're opening and closing it a lot easier. Uh, okay. So the next thing we want to do uh, is actually add a trigger to the uh, to the blueprint, and this is what uh, will allow us to actually interact with the door. Uh, so we want to actually add a, a box collision, um, and I'm going to go ahead and call this the trigger. It usually helps if I can type. Like so. Okay, and the box trigger itself is a little bit small at the moment, so I'm just going to go ahead and increase the box extent. It's going to make it 80 units tall. Um, and we'll make it about 80 units wide. And the depth. Uh, we'll do about 120. Uh, it's okay, so this is the, the current setup we have. Uh, so we've got a door frame, a door, and then our trigger. Uh, so with that set up, I'm just going to compile and save, and then move straight to the event graph. Uh, so next is the initial starting nodes. You can go ahead and just delete all of those. That's perfectly fine. And then under the variables list, you should be able to see those three objects that we've created inside our viewport. Uh, so go ahead and select the trigger uh, variable. And we actually want to add two of the events, uh, which you should be able to see on the details when you have your trigger selected. And the first one is on, com uh, on component to begin overlap, so we want to go ahead and add that one. And you should see the node appear in the event graph. And we actually want to go ahead and add a second one, which is the on component end overlap. So we'll need to use both of these. 
Uh, so the first thing I actually want to do is enable input for this blueprint. Uh, by default, uh, blueprints don't actually receive any input from the player. Uh, so this is when you're pressing the keys on your, your mouse or keyboard, or, or any other form of device that, that you may be creating your game for. Uh, so the first thing we actually want to do is just drag straight. Let's uh, so just go ahead and right click in an empty space and just want to search for enable input. And it should say target is actor, uh, just underneath the name there. And so that's the one that we will be needing. Uh, you want to make sure the target is set to self, as listed there. Uh, and we also then need to input our player controller. And so for this, we can just use the get player controller, like so. Like that. Yep, so the next thing we want to do is actually just disable input. Uh, when the player exits the trigger volume there. Making sure that the nodes are set up correctly. Uh, so once you've completed that, you should have something similar to this. Uh, so this works at the moment. When the player enters the trigger, it will enable input. Uh, when the player uh, leaves the trigger volume, it will disable input. Uh, so this, this is actually working. I'm just going to add a quick key press on E. Like so. I'm just going to add a quick print string. Just so we can test see whether or not it's actually working. Uh, so input working. Okay, so I'm just compile and save. And then we can add the door straight into the level there. And we can go and test it. Okay, so when we're away from the door, if we press E, uh, nothing happens. If I move to the door, press E, you'll notice at the top left there it says input working. Okay, so, that's so our input's now uh, obviously set up there. Okay, so what we actually want to do, instead of using the E press here, we actually want to use uh, an input binding. Um, so I'm just going to go and delete that for a moment. And save. And then we actually want to go to our uh, project settings. Like so. And you want to look for the input on the uh, under the engine options here. You'll notice you have a list of bindings uh, panel here. So your actions and access uh, access mappings. Uh, also, you can go and take a look and see what these are are set uh, set to. Uh, these are actually configurable. Uh, so also you have a config file. You can allow the player to change obviously various buttons that you use for certain actions. And so what we actually want to do is we're going to have a new action mapping. I'm just going to go ahead and call this interact. Like so. uh, and for the key, I'm going to go ahead and use the E key. Like so. Yeah, so that's set up, we're going to close out of it. And what we can do, uh, if we go back to our door blueprint, if you right click, uh, you just want to type in interact. And you'll notice the action event is there. Okay, and this just means uh, it's just a way of naming uh, what your inputs are uh, and then allowing the player to control um, what keys actually trigger that particular uh, action uh, through the config files. Okay, so with our interact there, uh, it should go and quickly test to make sure it's still working. There we go. Well, so you can try and change the, uh, the letter E there to whatever you would like. Okay, so I'm just going to quickly go back to, the, uh, back to our blueprint. So the next thing we actually want to do is animate the door opening and closing. Okay. And so but before we do that, we want to go ahead and make sure that we actually have collision on the, uh, on the door mesh. Uh, otherwise, the player is just going to go straight through it. Uh, I do believe by default in the starter content, The door itself doesn't have any collision. And uh, no. Uh, so obviously you're just going to open up the static mesh door that's in this starter content. I'm just going to go to collision and add a, a box simplified collision. I'm just going to go and add a collision to the door there. Um, it doesn't have to be perfect. Uh, you could always scale a little bit smaller. It's just something to stop the player from passing through. 
Just get a little There we go, that's fine. Okay, just quick set me. It's black. Okay, let's quickly test to make sure the collision's working. Yep, so the player's no longer going through the door there. Great. Let's just open up the uh, door blueprint again. Now, so the next thing we actually want to do is know whether or not the door is open or closed. Uh, so go ahead and add a new variable. Uh, for this, I'm just going to call it door open, like so. Uh, and the variable type is going to be a boolean. Uh, so next thing you know, I'm going to go ahead and just drag that into the event graph. And then I want to use a branch, like so. And then what the br branch will do, it will branch off depending on whether or not this variable is true or false. Uh, so this just allows us to control what we, uh, what we do. So if the door is open, which is true, we want to go ahead and set the door to closed and vice versa, set the door to open. Uh, this is just so we set the state of the door whenever we go to actually change it. Uh, so we can plug that into there. And yet again, using our print strings to test to make sure it's working. So door closed door open. So now if we go back and test, if we press the E, obviously it will then cycle through the various options. Uh, sense dates for the door there. Okay. Let's move these out of the way for now. Okay, so we now actually want to animate the door. So then get the uh, reference to the door, so you can just drag from the uh, component panel. And we want to actually just set the rotation of the door, and that's just the relative rotation. Let's just go ahead and just duplicate it. Uh, so when the door is uh, closed, uh, obviously the rotation is going to be zero, zero, zero. Uh, but when the door is open, uh, I'm just going to set my yaw to minus 80, uh, which is the that one. So minus 80. I'm just going to get a quick test. Okay, as you can see, the door is opening and closing. Uh, obviously, in the moment, moment you probably notice that the door itself is actually just snapping open and closed. Um, okay, so let's go ahead and actually fix that. So what we want to do now is, is actually animate the, the open and close process. Okay, so the way we're going to do this, going on a new variable. Uh, and for this, I'm just going to call it the door uh, open angle. Uh, I'm just going to go ahead and make this a rotor. And I'm actually going to make this editable and expose on spawn. Uh, and what that means is that when we have our door selected in the viewport, we can actually control the, the actual angle there for the door. Uh, so we can actually control how, how open and closed the door actually is. Uh, well one quick thing I'm going to do is quickly go to the construction script. And I'm actually just going to go and just copy this door open. True and Okay, so for true, I'm just going to go ahead and set the relative rotation, uh, rotation to the door open angle. And if the door open is false, I'm going to go ahead and set that to 0, 0, 0. OK, 
Okay, and on the door open, I'm going to go ahead and make that editable, and yet again, just exposing the spawn. Um, which means now, when you're in the viewport, uh, you'll notice there's also a door open option. So you go ahead and check that. Box. It should uh, cycle through the, the door open angle. The moment it's also set to zero, zero. So if you go ahead and change that, in the viewport you can then actually just see how the door is going to look. So I'm just going to go ahead and set that default to minus 8 for this particular blueprint. Uh, so for that, uh, when you set a default it just means when you drag it from the content browser uh, the particular variable will be set to what the default value is. Uh, because the variable is exposed we can manually change it in the, the viewport there. Um, okay. Okay, so now if we go back to the event graph, I want to actually start tweening between um, the zero your and the defined your in the uh, in the variables tab. Uh, so for this, we're going to actually go ahead and use a timeline. So if we go ahead and add a timeline, I'm just going to call this uh, driver, and I'm just going to go ahead and add a float variable. Uh, I'm just going to then call this uh, time. Uh, so the next thing I want to do is add some points to this uh, timeline. So we shift click, uh, you'll create some points. That's uh, so the first point, I'm just going to set to zero, 0, and the second point, I'm going to set to 1 and 1. Uh, I'm just going to go ahead and right click and just get this to a auto, uh, to a I think I set both and set these to a user defined which gives a nice uh, sort of ease in ease out effect on this particular value uh, so what the timeline is going to do it's going to change the uh, time variable from 0 to 1 over this space of a second okay, so if we go back to the main event graph again uh, you'll notice our timeline is here with the time uh, so what we can actually do now is, is just play uh, just set this up. So when the door is closed, uh, so door opens, we want to play, and when the door is closed, we want to reverse, like so. Okay. And what we can actually do now is delete one of the uh, set relative rotations and use the update. And we want to just tween from our starting angle and zero. Okay. So we can now want to enter uh no it's just want to alert the rotor. Like so. And I want to put the time into the alpha. Uh, so what this is going to do, it's going to tween between the value of A and B based on what the alpha is. Uh, so zero would be just A. Uh, 1 would be just B, and uh, something like 0.5 would be in between A and B. So I'm going to go and plug that in like so. Uh, obviously, additional option is you could always go and check the shortest path option there, which is perfectly fine. Okay, so we should actually be able to go and test this now. So as you can see, the door now opens and closes in a nice animated fashion. So it does appear that based on the angle there, uh, the door is actually a little bit too small for me to uh, squeeze through. So I'm just going to go and just quickly scale that up. 1.1 uh, should be sufficient. There we go. Um, okay, so there is one last thing that I have forgotten to do. So if you want to come back to the old door blueprint, you just want to double click on your timeline. You want to make sure that you check where it says use last keyframe. Uh, this just means it doesn't try and go all the way to five seconds. Because uh, if it does, then when you go to reverse the, uh, the timeline, it'll take four seconds before it'll actually start moving the door. Uh, whereas this just sets it so it'll stop at one. Okay. Okay, so the last thing we want to do. Uh, it's just set the start time 
uh, for the, the actual timeline. Uh, the reason why we need to do this is because with us uh, setting something up in the construction script, this allows us to change whether or not the door starts open or closed. I um, just want to obviously reflect that in the, uh, the driver there. Okay, um, so what we can do on the event begin play, uh, we want to then set a new time. Uh, and what we can actually do is use the boolean and just co convert that straight to a float. Uh, so if the door is open, uh, it'll be 1, so set the time to 1. If the door is closed, it'll set the time to 0. And that's exactly what we want. And that just helps prevent some uh, snapping that happens uh, when you first interact with the door. Okay. Okay. So the great thing about uh, this particular method, uh, I can go ahead and just drag multiple instances of the door into the level. Uh, and they all act independently. So I can go ahead and, and uh, just open and close the doors independently of, of one another. And this just makes things so much easier, when, especially if you've got multiple doors in, in each level. Uh, it can be a pain having to go through and set them all up uh, inside of the, the level blueprint. Okay, okay so that's going to conclude uh, our first uh, episode on the, the door blueprint here. Uh, so obviously today we're going to set up the, the basics to it. Uh, in the next episode, we'll hopefully uh, obviously expand upon this and add a few additional features uh, that makes the door a bit more, more exciting to use. Thank you for watching. Uh, if you liked uh, the video, obviously go ahead and press the like button. Um, so yeah, thank you. Bye.